Hey y'all and welcome back to Katie on the flip side. We just got back from our big trip to Disney World and the Bahamas on a Disney cruise and it was amazing, super, super amazing. We were gone for seven days and it's probably the longest vacation, not just driving down to the beach that we've ever taken as a family. And I packed a lot differently than I have for any other vacation. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that I did differently because it was so helpful to me and I found that I was so much more organized and so much less stressed on the trip. Let's just start with the biggest thing, the suitcase. We always have had colored luggage if you're looking for new luggage, I highly recommend getting something other than just black because there's a lot of black suitcases out there and if you're flying, it's really hard to identify from far away when they're coming out. It's also nice to be able to look out the window and make sure they're getting your luggage on the plane while you're waiting for your plane to load. But if you're not buying new luggage, we like to have a colored tag or even like a ribbon to help us identify from far away our luggage so that we can see it coming out. Another recommendation is a suitcase that's expandable. So this one is just your average suitcase, but then there's a little special area right here where you can unzip it and it expands. If you've ever been anywhere like Disney World, you might end up buying some extra stuff along the way and needing a little bit of extra room to pack on the way back home. Also a suitcase that can do this instead of just having two wheels. Suitcases with these type of wheels on the bottom are life-changing. If you have any question about your old suitcase with like the little janky rollers on them, it's really worth the investment. You can spend a ton of money on luggage or you can go to like TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Walmart and buy something that will do. This is actually a Samsonite piece of luggage, which is a nice piece of luggage and I'm pretty sure I got it at Ross or TJ Maxx or Marshalls or somewhere like that. All right, so what to put in this luggage. This is the part where I did the Things differently than I ever have. I bought these packing pods from Walmart on a whim. They're called packing cubes. They're made by American Tourister. There's dog, don't pack your dog. To be honest, I've never tried any other type of packing cube, packing pod, whatever. So I have nothing to compare these to, but I love these. They come in three different sizes. One is just this large size, like individual bag. Then there's another one that's a pretty large size, but it has two sides to it. So there's a zipper on this side and then there's a zipper on this side with mesh. They look really thin and like they wouldn't hold a lot, but trust me, they hold a lot of things. When you pack them full, they expand up about this tall, maybe what's that, three inches or so. And then this is the smaller size, so in comparison, to the large one, this is the small one. Aside from the obvious bonus of organization, one major thing I like about these, <laughs> they have a little nice fancy handle, but they do help you consolidate things in your suitcase. So I am an overpacker and I tried not to be so hard this time, but it's easier to smush things in here and then zip it up and then smush them in your bag than it is to have a whole suitcase full of a bunch of different clothes and then you're trying to like smush and smash and get your hair dryer in there and your shoes and everything else and then your clothes that you had so nicely folded are now like sideways. This keeps them all like straight and the way you want them in there so that they're not getting all wrinkly. So what did I put in these bags? For me, I put one of these with shirts that I was gonna wear in the daytime. So I had like my park going shirts, like my Mickey shirts and different things like that that I would be wearing during the day. And then I had another smaller one that had nighttime shirts in it. So like for dinners, maybe a little bit dressier shirt. And I kind of planned out the days, knowing what parks we would go to, knowing what dinners we had planned, I knew how we would do that. So when it was the night before, even in the hotel or that next morning, and I was in a hurry, I didn't have to go through every shirt in my bag. I went, okay, here's the bag of daytime shirts, and they were in order of which day I was gonna wear them, and I just grabbed the shirt that I needed. I had another bag that had, I think this one actually still says it, shorts and pants. So this one had shorts and pants in it. So I would grab a shirt, I would grab shorts, and this one I did mix like the day and nighttime shorts and pants, whatever, bottoms were in here. But for wearing, yeah, not the sleeping ones, not the ones I was gonna wear to the pool, so that when it's time to get up and get dressed in the morning, I know this is what I need to pull out to get dressed. Now, as far as these labels go, when I was packing, I thought this is so much overkill. Like Cullen is going to think I'm crazy for writing shorts and pants on these. You can clearly see through the mesh and I'm gonna be able to tell what it is. 
But no, I am so glad that they had labels on them because it does all blend together and you don't remember what you packed as much as you think you will. You're gonna most likely be sharing a hotel room with your kids who may be sleeping while you're trying to get dressed in the start. You can see labels, super helpful. I bought some painter's tape. We got green and we got blue. For the kids' stuff, Brooks' stuff all had blue tape and Gaines' stuff all had green, so it's super easy to differentiate. I had another bag for me that had swimming clothes in it. So it had all my bathing suits, cover-ups, full shorts that I was gonna wear. Previous trips I've gone on where I'll try to organize it in the suitcase. Like, okay, I'll put all the bathing suits on this side so that I'll know they're over here. Well, by the end of the trip, if you don't unpack into the drawers, then the bathing suits kind of just get strewn all around as you're digging for something else and it just becomes a mess. I had another bag that had my like sleeping shorts and t-shirts and stuff in it. Okay, for the kids clothes, this is where I got super extra, but it was super helpful, <laughs> trust me on this. For each day, I knew which park we were gonna be at and where we were gonna be. So they each had a Ziploc baggie with the date written on it, and it had their shirt, their shorts, their socks, and their underwear. Literally everything that we needed to get them dressed for the day, except their shoes, because they obviously wore the same ones most days, in a bag. As I was packing, I laid out a row of Gaines clothes, a row of Brooks's clothes. I was able to just visually look across all of it and go, okay, Monday, everybody has underwear. Tuesday, everybody has underwear. Every single day, making sure everybody had everything. While we were there, it was a little chilly, so there were some days that I threw in an extra long sleeve shirt, or I would throw in long pants and a pair of shorts, not knowing which one they would need. This is the best thing I've ever done as far as packing for a planned trip like this. Now, a trip to the beach, this is probably not gonna be helpful because I don't know what we're doing every day. We're not going to a different park with a different theme every single day. For a Disney World trip, super duper duper helpful. Then when I put them in the suitcase, I put them obviously last day on the bottom and to the top so that as they used them, we could take them out. We even used some of these baggies to put dirty clothes in as we went through the trip. Now for the kids, they obviously had other outfits than just their daytime outfits. So for each of them, I had a bag for their dinner outfits, so like their more fancy outfits for nighttime. I had a bag for swim for each kid. And by a bag, I mean, these little pod things. They shared a pajama one, so the one that split down the middle. I had Brooks's pajamas on one side, Gaines's pajamas on one side, so that I could just grab the pajama bag, get the pajamas out, and put them in there. For each kid, I also had an extra bag that had extra clothes in it because kids, they're gonna pee their pants or spill something on themselves. So I had a few extra shirts and a few extra pants some extra underwear, all that kind of stuff. All right, so clothes are taken care of. Now, accessories and other things. I found these also at Walmart in the same section with the travel stuff, and they have three different sizes. They're mesh, see-through, very lightweight, very durable and nice quality. There's a yellow one, a smaller blue one, and an even smaller red one. So for these, I packed any medicines. I have a recommendation that you pack at least pain medication, ibuprofen or Tylenol for the adults and for the kids. One thing of a cough syrup of some sort, a thermometer, band-aids, Pepto-Bismol or whatever maybe stomach calming thing that you might need, and any kind of allergy medication, runny nose, anything like that. I always think nobody's gonna get sick and then I got sick on the trip and was coughing my head off. Luckily, I had packed the like chest rub and Cullen had packed some cough and cold medicine, which was super helpful. We had ibuprofen, we were prepared. But we also have like different things that we take in the morning or at night. So I have some vitamins I take at night. I have like birth control, hair, skin, and nails, things that I take take, all those different things that you take at different times of day. So I had one bag for nighttime stuff and one bag for daytime. As much as I thought it was kind of crazy to pack two different bags for day and night, it was actually kind of helpful. I had one that was one color and one that was the other color so that I could like remember to make sure that I took the things that I was supposed to when I did. And then for the kids, I had a bag that had their medicine in it, recommendation, put a Ziploc baggie inside and then put it in here just in case like the cough medicine or ibuprofen or whatever spills out in there. Since it was all in one of these little baggies, I was able to just leave it in the suitcase in case we needed it. Luckily for the kids, we didn't need it. Also had one bag that I packed hair stuff in. So I had like the hair brushes, the rubber bands, all of those kind of like toiletry items. I do have my own like toiletry bag 
that I always take with me that has my toothbrush and all that stuff. But for those extra little miscellaneous things, it was nice to have them individually separated into bags. And a bonus is that as we were getting ready to go, I saw that it said to be prepared when we got on the cruise ship that we wouldn't possibly get our luggage until like six o'clock that night. I was able to use one of these larger yellow bags to make sure that I had a swimsuit and a cover up, a change of clothes for dinner that night. So I had just a little easy convenient bag that doesn't take up much space to shove into our carry-on bag. Okay, my other main tip for the big suitcase is to bring along one of these vacuum seal bags. I found these ones also at Walmart in the travel section. They're made by Magic Bag, and this is the large size that I have. And it shows how you just put stuff in there and you just roll it up and close it. So you don't have to have like a vacuum or anything like that to seal them up. They're about this big, so pretty large size. So we did Disney World the first three and a half days and then the cruise the last three and a half days. So we transferred from one place to the other. So when we moved, from the Disney World Resort to the cruise, I took all the dirty clothes that we had accumulated so far, put them in here, and then I was able to just close this up and smash it down so it was vacuum sealed and compacted, and that just made packing up and going to the next place easier. It also made it so that when we got to the cruise location, I knew what was dirty and what wasn't, and we wouldn't be having to rummage through additional clothes that we weren't gonna be using anymore. As far as bringing dirty clothes home, this is one of my favorite packing hacks. So some specific things for the cruise portion of the trip that I found helpful was having a couple of bags to take off the ship when we went on the island. Our kids have these cute little beach bags that my sister got for them one year. They're able to hold the things that they need for the beach, our sunscreen in it, some goggles, a little waterproof bag that my mom got for us so we can put our cell phones. Anything just that's gonna maybe get wet or sandy, that's, this is a mesh bag so it will all the sand will fall out and it won't make a mess when we pack it back up. I also packed in our big suitcase one of these collapsible tote bags. I think we got these at Costco but I'm pretty sure you can get them off Amazon. They're made by Smart Design as the brand it says on here. It collapses, super flat and easy so you just pack it underneath all your clothes in your suitcase to take with you and then it just pops open like this it's got pockets on the side it's got a mesh top that zips closed so you can keep everything in there and then it's got some little mesh pockets on the inside this was perfect for us to take the little beach bag with all the stuff in it and put towels and snacks and waters and whatever else we needed when we headed off the ship onto the beach and we could tote it along with our two kids without having to like break our arms and drop everything. We actually have one of these that we use in a larger size when we go on like our summer family beach trips and everything, but this was the perfect size just for the cruise. And then when you're done with it and ready to head home, you just fold it right back up put it back in the bottom of the bag. As far as a carry-on bag for the plane, I used the same bag for a carry-on and also used this bag for taking to Disney World, hooking to the back of the stroller. We have found it easier with kids to have a little bag like this that we keep snacks and everything in. It's super easy for them to be in a bag like this so that you're not digging to the bottom of the bag trying to find snacks when somebody needs a snack immediately. We also like to take their sippy cups from home. We obviously don't fill them up if we're gonna get on a plane. I've done that a few too many times and then they have to stop me and check me and that's just a pain. So make sure they're empty. But we always take a cup for each kid because you know you get those little cups on the plane and then they're like spilling them everywhere, or there's turbulence or whatever. It just becomes more of a hassle than it's worth. So we take the cup with us, that way they can have it in the room, they can have it throughout the trip, and then we just wash it out in the sink at the hotel room. When they were younger, as baby babies, we did have some little like chew toys and little baby toys and all the things to keep them entertained. And we would keep those in a separate small bag within the big carry-on bag. This bag is one that I highly recommend for travel. This one is made by Jeep. We had one that we originally got when Gaines was a baby and unfortunately the zipper didn't hold up too well. We got this one when Brooks was born and the zipper has held up just great. So maybe we just got a faulty one or maybe they've upgraded their zippers, I don't know. But it's got a nice big huge pocket in the middle. It's got a zipper pouch in here. It's got like little pouches here where you can put cups or something in there. It's got a side pouch that's insulated. It has this thing on the side for wipes that's amazing. You put your wipes in there and they're easy access. It has a pocket right here where I like to keep easy access things, ID, all that stuff that you need when you're going through 
the plain process. It's got a little pouch here where we usually keep passies or hair clips. And it's got this front pouch where we keep like, we got headphones in here. We got a little mini fan in case anybody gets hot. Even another little zipper pouch right here. Oh, and then there's also extra pouches right here that you can keep stuff in. So compartmentalization, if you can't tell, is a big favorite of mine. And this bag has been super awesome. It does have little straps right here that buckle like this so that you can buckle it onto the back of a stroller. Oh, we also did find it super helpful to have something to keep our like travel documents in. This little passport holder that Cullen's mom gave us, I think a while ago, maybe when we were going on our honeymoon. For the cruise, we did just use our birth certificates instead of passports because the kids didn't have them. But if you're gonna need documents like that or even you have to print boarding passes. I know you shouldn't have to these days, but we had to on this trip for whatever reason. It's easy just to have them like easily accessible in our nice little side pouch. I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting that we took or some tip that or trick that we used that would be helpful, but that is what I can think of now. I guess the main takeaways are compartmentalization is huge, labeling and compartmentalizing so that you've got things in different places and compartmentalizing by time frame or event versus compartmentalizing by type. So not putting just all the medicines together, all the shirts together, but keeping them together by like period of time that you're gonna be using them. In addition to compartmentalization, labeling, organizing, just knowing that anything you can do ahead of time, the smallest thing is gonna help to reduce your stress and allow you to have extra time while you're on the trip to enjoy your kids, enjoy your family, not be stressed out and not have anything else extra just bogging your brain down, trying to remember where you put something or what you need for what event or worrying that you're not gonna have the right stuff. Lay it all out, take your time beforehand, start packing in advance and you will be good to go. If there's anything else you guys can think of that you have questions about or that I haven't answered, leave them below and I will answer as many as I can. Let me know if you have a trip coming up. Is anybody planning to go to Disney World? Anybody planning to go on a Disney cruise? We are super thankful to Disney for taking us on this trip and planning it all for us. It was amazing and we are so incredibly thankful for the opportunities that we get doing this job we do to have fun trips and fun family experiences. Memories last a lifetime for sure. It was awesome. I have a few more Disney videos coming up soon and hopefully I can answer any additional questions y'all have, but I'm definitely gonna be talking about maintaining my weight on a Disney cruise, Disney trip, because that is something that I was able to accomplish. I actually lost one pound <laughs> over the seven days. I'm excited to tell you guys about how that worked for me. Thank y'all so much for watching. Give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Lots of fun stuff coming up. I'll see you guys Sunday night on my channel here and also on Instagram, katiepie07 for a live stream around nine o'clock central time. Bye guys.